everyone. Welcome back to my workshop, Mike McConville, Stratford, Ontario, Canada. For Stratford. So in this case, we've got a 1967 ES-335 with a broken headstock. I am going to take this one through the next surgery process. Well, I'm bringing you in for an ultra-close look at this break. So I've made this point before, and I need to make it again. It is not about the adhesive, 48 hour epoxy, aviation epoxy, hide glue, it doesn't matter what it is. It breaks because of the grain orientation. I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up or not, but this was the previous break. You can see the fault line there where they glued it up. And it didn't break on the previous break, it broke right beside the previous break. Unfortunately, this type of break, as you all know, is fairly common. Flip this face down. So this puts the headstock right at chest level. Now I'm supporting this as I push down to get those screws out. Easy does it here. Now I've got this little snapshot container for earplugs, foam earplugs, that I'm using to keep track of all these little screws. Tuck this away for later. Yeah, that closed up nicely in the week. Very happy how that came together. And look at the original color underneath the machine heads. I'm going to talk to the customer about shading it in with that original Gibson red after the splines are in there. It's pretty close to completely invisible. So this is how I orient the guitar. So when I feed that hot hide glue in, it'll run downhill. We're going to saturate that break completely with hot hide glue. So we have our thinned down hot hide glue heated up to about 145 degrees, which is the ideal temperature. So I'm just making sure that we completely saturate that break and uh, being careful not to flex it too much. Good. I put a little piece of leather on there so we don't mar the face or the back. And we're going to let that set. And we'll. Looks like we got pretty good saturation. I'm just sort of checking the very end of this. Yeah. Now I'm going to give that about uh, 45 minutes to let it tack. Before it cures, I'll wipe off all the excess. Now, one of the nice things about high glue, it doesn't stick to lacquer. So we're going to do all our cleanup before the glue actually cures. So we've got that penetration right to the deepest part of that fracture. So that is completely soaked with a thinned down version of hot high glue. There's one little chip of lacquer. That we're going to leave because the spline is going to sweep right through that. Very happy with that. That came together good and tight. We'll let that sit overnight. So when you get your next surgery jig for shipping purposes, these two cinch pins are put on in reverse just so that it fits in the carton so we don't have to ship it in a great big huge carton. So you need to take them out and then reinstall them. The rubber tips also just press fit onto those threads. This one, same deal. Next thing I want to explain, there's a threaded stringer that goes across to support the neck when you put it face down. You're going to see that in a minute. They serve two purposes. This is the headstock end in this case. This end controls your depth of cut. That aluminum U-channel is clipped on there and that'll just rotate so that the fingerboard sits on a flat surface. The one on this end, I basically just drop it right down to the bottom. I'm going to loosen it off a little bit. And it also pivots. 
So the second purpose for these stringers here and here is to adjust the tension of the router sled so it moves without any apparent stiffness or looseness. Because it's a channel, the walls on either side are slightly flexible. So you adjust the tension on the support stringers, top and bottom, so that the router sled moves smoothly along its arc. And this U-channel pivots so that you have a flat surface for the headstock to rest on when you're making the cut. So when you do your trial run and you sweep, you can look through the windows and the side walls and the indexing pin tells you exactly where the cut starts. Long before you flick the switch on the router, you know exactly where the cut starts. The indexing pin indicates that's the depth you're going to adjust your cutter to. And the deepest part of the cut and where it exits. No guesswork here, like I said, long before you flick the switch on the router, you know exactly where you're making that cut. So the two sides of the neck surgery jig are elliptical. This end allows you to make a shallow cut, and this end is a deeper sweep, and that's the one you're going to use most of the time on less balls. So we're going to go into the worst part of that break. That'll be the deepest part of the cut, and then in this case it's going to exit somewhere around here. You'll see. So when you get your kits, once you set up that first time, this stringer here basically never moves. You just leave it right where it is. The stringer on this end will allow you to sort of alter the depth of cut. Once you get it set up that first time for the Gibson headstock tilt, you're pretty well good to go. Take all the time you need to get it set up and have the guitar firmly clamped in place. At that point, the easiest part of the job is to make the cut. So I simply measure from the nut to the inside wall. In this case, it's 4.4 centimeters. Same distance on the other side, 4.4 centimeters. And at this end, it's 4.1. The other side, same thing, 4.1. And on this end, these rubber-tipped fasteners hold the neck dead center in the jig. Your hockey puck, surprise, surprise, holds the neck down firmly against that flat surface of the U-channel. So this way nothing is gonna budge. You flick that switch and like I said this is the easiest part of the job is making the cut. So this neck has been broken twice. Once this neck surgery is done this will never break again. So when you glue in the splines leave them flat on top and this way your spring clamps can kind of grab them and push them into that dado. I'll sand them to the shape of the neck after the glue is set. Well we have Neil's 1967 ES335 here that uh, the neck uh, headstock broke for the second time. So we sliced it and spliced it with two splines in there. There's a couple other things I did to this. Uh, just kind of made the executive decision to do this. Because this has broken twice we now went through the whole neck surgery process. Now Darcy picked up on the tone at the heel, that Gibson maroon, and blew in the headstock, sort of same color, and it is now undetectable. I opted to go for a set of brand new Gibson Deluxe machine heads. So these machine heads, because they actually bolt on, the original machine heads were just a press fit. So they didn't offer any structural integrity or support to the headstock. These ones, because they're bolted on, the actual casing just skirts along the splines on either side, adding further structural integrity to the headstock. Now the other common issue with these guitars is over a long period of time, these bridges tend to kind of sink down a little bit. So what happens is the radius no longer matches the fingerboard completely. I will talk to the customer about that. We'll seriously consider putting a Tone Pro bridge on. And of course the other issue with a 53 year old guitar, the frets are down to 38 thou. They're not impossible to play but you know really uh, best case scenario it should have new frets. Now I did dress level recrown polisher frets. I got all the marks out. I did not take a lot off, but there wasn't much to take off. It's a 53 year old guitar. They've been dressed several times. Neil will be greatly relieved just to get it back structurally intact. Uh, of course there's a 
compensated nut on this as well. Now these are 11 to 49 strings, which lots of people use. I use them myself. But these are D'Addario's half round string. Kind of interesting string. Anyway, so I've recorded uh, kind of a B minor thing uh, with the loop station, and I'm going to just kind of blow over top. So we'll let that play, and then I'll let you hear this thing. So I've got everything wide open here. I'll flick from bridge pickup to both to neck pickup and, and just kind of noodle over this thing, let you hear it. So this is what we got, by the way. So I let that loop, I'll blow over that. through the round robin of chords, so G, these are first position chords, G, so E major, 